for the hand of God's protection during this storm this week upon you all. And, and I feel, to echo what Bishop said, the power of a praying church is the thing that hell fears the most. In fact, I'm going to preach about that tonight. There's just power in prayer, and, and I give the Lord honor for keeping all of us safe. We ought to thank the Lord for every little thing possible. You're breathing right now because he kept his hand on you this week. Oh, we could, let's go a little higher right now. Just thank him. Come on, let the enemy know you can't touch this. The Lord's with me. The Lord's with me. The Lord's with me. If God be for us, who can be against us? And we are so thankful to be back. If you love the bishop, would you get loud and clap your hands? Amen. I won't even do it because I know who will get the louder applause. I'm excited to hear Bishop preach Sunday morning. Anybody else excited to hear the word of the Lord? If you did not, if you did not, if you were not here last Sunday and you have not listened to it, you need to listen to it. If you go to this church, you need to listen to what was preached Sunday morning. Everyone said amen. In fact, if you were here, you should go listen to it again. That's just some stuff only the pastor can say. Amen. I'm so glad to have my beautiful wife with me tonight. We have, we have driven 17 hours to be here, and we are glad to be here, and we're glad that drive is over. Praise the Lord. Have you ever driven with three children under the age of six across the country multiple times? You will start to question your sanity quickly, and we have questioned it several times in the last two days. But God had his hand on us, and we're here. Amen. Isaiah 59, 16, and Romans 8, 26 and 27. Isaiah 59, 16, Romans 8, 26 and 27. I've been praying all day, and I have been feeling the Lord direct this throughout the week. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Someone say, no intercessor. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him, and his righteousness, it sustained him. Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I have been asking God for several weeks when to preach this message, because this message is a culture changer. This message is a revival changer. This is the one that shifts everything, and if you're not serious before this one, you will be serious after this one. And so tonight the Lord has told me to preach it. And I want to preach to you tonight, unleash the intercessors. Unleash the intercessors. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm going to pray tonight like I've never prayed in my life. Turn to someone else and tell them miracles will happen all over the world tonight. Would you thank the Lord one more time? It's about to get real in here. Would you thank the Lord one more time and lift up your voice? I love you, Jesus. Have your way tonight. Anoint me and anoint the people in one mind and one accord. We pray in Jesus' name. And somebody said amen. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 1, it's something that I mentioned in a prayer meeting a few weeks ago. I want you to see it with your own eyes. In 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, Paul said, I exhort therefore... That first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Paul is saying right there that there are four types of praying that the child of God should be doing. There is obviously prayer, which is you communicating with God, talking as a friend would talk to a friend. 
And if you were here that Wednesday night, you know where I'm going with this right now. You, it's, it's not very emotional when you are in prayer. It's, it's you being alone with the Lord. It's usually spur of the moment as you start talking to God about situations that are going on or worshiping him and loving him. A supplication is a little more emotional than prayer. The word supplication is deasis, which means need or something that you would bring to God only God could take care of. When you hear the Bible say or you read the Bible say you should bring your supplications to the Lord, he's telling you to bring your needs to him. And that's why it's more emotional than just praying because you cannot go very far if it's really a need without feeling the emotion of the need attached to your life. That's why it's easy to cry and get serious about something that you feel in your house or in your body or in your finances and when you pray about it you're emotional about it because it is a supplication it's something involving you and your family and your situation therefore you get emotional when you pray about it the third channel is thanksgiving and that's obviously self-explanatory when you're giving God thanks for what he does I will say that's the most untapped channel of the four channels it's the most most unused channel of prayer when it should be the most used channel of prayer. A lot of us know how to beg God and ask God and say, if you'll do this, I'll do whatever. And we beg God with desperation. And as soon as God answers the prayer, we forget about it five minutes later. And we're asking God, where are you going to show up next? Because we do not know how to really live in thanksgiving. I challenge you in the upcoming days in your prayer life to try to tap into a prayer meeting where you do nothing but thank God for what he has done. And you will be surprised how many things you will be able to thank him for that you had no idea Holy Ghost right there sometimes we ought to thank him for things we had no idea he was doing I'd rather thank him for something he did not do than not thank him for something that he did do. somebody shout amen but the fourth channel the deepest channel of prayer, the most powerful channel of prayer, the greatest prayer you can tap into is intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is different than the others because first of all, intercession is not you praying, it's the Spirit of God praying through you the will of God. Therefore, intercession is the only prayer that can guaranteed be answered every time it is released because it's not the person in control of what's being said. It's the God of the person speaking his will in a situation and he trusts the person to be able to be selfless to pray the prayer through them. So, when you tap into intercession, the number one thing you must understand is, unlike the other channels, intercession, you are not in control. If you're in control, you're not in intercessory prayer. Here's why. Because in supplication, I can stop. I can wipe the tears away. In thanksgiving, I can say, okay, Lord, I thanked you enough. I'm still driving the car. I still have a hold of the wheel. But when intercession gets a hold of someone, God is speaking through them. And he does not stop speaking until what he is speaking has been accomplished somewhere in the world. And so if you want to get into intercession, you have to be selfless. You have to say no matter what time it is of the day or night, what the situation is, if you need someone, I'm available. The Bible says he was looking for intercessors. He couldn't find any. He searches the world for people that are not just praying for their own stuff, but they're saying, God, can you use me? There are people in this room right now that will be used tonight in India, in Africa, in New York City, in a prayer. I know you're patty cake, but wait till we're done. When God gets a hold of you, he can pray things through you you all over the planet 
Some of you are only in here right now because someone interceded for you. And the reason you can clap your hands is because there was a grandma or a mom or a dad that knew how to pray and pulled you out of that sin. Intercession is powerful. Vesta Mangan said, intercession is the only time you're in three places at once. You're in heaven, you're in earth, and you are in hell at the same time. When you tap an intercessory prayer, angels are on the move. When you're in intercession, demons are backing up. When you're in intercession, and people, their situations are transformed. When you are in intercession. Oh, I feel like taking it deep tonight. Buckle your seatbelt. Here we go. Or unbuckle it, whatever. Intercession. Here are some things that will disqualify you from being an intercessor. Number one, if God can't trust you to pray for the situation because of an attitude you have. What are you saying? If you're a racist, well, it's going to get real great tonight. God can't trust you to intercede for someone of a different ethnicity that you do not like. Because you will not pray the way an intercessor will pray. Now I got about seven amens right there. But if you're truly an intercessor, you are not concerned where the prayer is going. You're concerned, am I doing everything I can do to be the one you choose to pray the prayer? Okay? Some things that will hit hidden sin. Shouting it up, down, and here like crazy. And doing other things out there. Disqualifies you from being an intercessor. Here's a real good one. Laziness. If God can count on you at 4.15 p.m. to pray, but he wasn't, he don't dare go to your house at 4.15 a.m. to pray. Oh, it's quiet right there. Do you know that witches pray between the hours of 2 and 4 a.m. because it's the darkest hour of the night? Every witch alive prays between 2 and 4 a.m. And the reason why powerful prayers happen and God answers prayers is because people usually get up and pray at the breaking of the day. And when you start to pray at the breaking of the day, angels are coming and they are going. And Daniel and Revelation say, angels pick up your prayers and take them before the throne and dump them out before God. I want to be praying when heaven is moving in the atmosphere. That's what causes prayers to get out. Intercessory prayer is what saved your soul. On the cross, on the cross, he was not just saying cute sayings. He was an intercession when he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Had he not been interceding while they were crucifying him, they would all be going to hell. But his intercession is what saved them, and it's what saved you, and it's what saved me. That's powerful right there. When Stephen was being stoned, to death he prayed father lay not this sin to their charge and even though they were killing him there was one of the guys that was there to kill him and God heard the prayer of the intercessor Stephen and God saved Paul because of intercessory prayer intercessors do their best work alone this is going to sting you. Please don't let it sting too bad. But intercessors do not need background music to pray. That's so cute. Apparently a lot of us do, though. If you need music to pray, this is going to be really straight. That All that tells me as a preacher is you do not have a prayer life. And I'm all for music in the background. But if I have to have a beat or a song to get me to reach up to God, I am depending on someone to connect me there because I cannot connect myself. And, 
and intercessor does not care what's going on around them. I'm in the business of saving someone tonight, so I'm going to pray no matter what's being played. And I'm not trying to make light of the music. And we need the music because some people would not clap their hands at all. Like they wouldn't even unfold their arms all through church if it wasn't for music. That scares me because Jesus is watching and he stretched his arms out for you and we can't even stretch our arms up to him. <laughs> Intercessors, when they truly tap into it. Now, this is something that I did not know that was taught to me, and that's very true. I went to Sister Cole, Billy Cole's house. Sister Cole was a powerful intercessor, and Billy Cole saw a million people get the Holy Ghost, and she took me to the spot on the floor where she said, I prayed right here for six days. I only got up to use the restroom, and for six days, when they were in Ethiopia on the last crusade, I laid right here on this spot and prayed until that last service when 65,000 people were filled with the Holy Ghost in a few seconds. Now watch this. She told me this. I said, what's the number one thing about intercession I need to know about? She said, it's very simple. The number one signal that intercession is near you is depression. You pray, God, give me a burden. And because you're carnal, when he lays it on you, it feels like heaviness and depression. And she said the problem with the American culture is everyone medicates everything that gets heavy. Well, I don't like the way I feel. I better change my outfit. I better go to the mall. I better eat something. I better get on my phone. It's going to get quiet now. She said, that's because we do not know what a real burden feels like. And when it hits us, because we are not connected, we try to get it off of us. I'm sure thankful he didn't shrug the cross off. I should have all of you on that right there. I'm sure thankful that he didn't say this is too much for me, but he carried it anyway. Someone ought to praise him right now for carrying the weight that he did not have to carry. Now, and the reason she said that, she said, because everyone says I'm fighting depression. But if people prayed more, they would realize that heaviness usually is a need. And God drops in because he's looking for an intercessor and you feel it. And you don't like the way it feels in your flesh. And because we're not connected to the spirit, we take it personal. I just don't like the way I feel. I like what I'm hearing in my head. And we take the spiritual need. And God comes to the house and says, here, you asked for a burden. There's something going on in, in Australia right now. But I can't tell you about it. I can only show up and it's heavy. Oh, I don't like the way that feels. I better get on my phone for nine hours and scroll until you leave the house. We don't know he leaves the house. We just think we feel better. Oh, it's going to get real tonight. I'm going to find you. You can hide in the pew, but I'm going to find you intercessory prayer she said depression is a signal for it and if you would i said what do i do she said when it hits you that hard you've got to drop everything no matter where you are and so i don't know what it is lord i don't need to know the details i don't like what i feel though right now and the devil wants me to take it personal like it's something about me that i don't like but i block that in the name of jesus lord whoever it is right now that's oh i feel the holy ghost helping someone right now whoever it is right now that's fighting that's low that's about to do something crazy i pray right and if you'll get in the spirit here's another thing she said and Billy Cole taught this too this is amazing she said the easiest way to tap into it intercessory prayer is to start praying about things that trouble you just think of a certain type of situation that if you heard if you read that story on the news it would 
and start to pray for those type of situations because then you get real in the spirit and you pray like no one else will pray. So you can be said, I want to go, let's go deep here. Let's get going. So the first time it hit, I was in the closet praying and I didn't even know why this happened, but I knew when I was praying that I was praying for Poland. And I was praying for a preacher in Poland, a missionary. And I didn't even know if there was a missionary in Poland. I just knew that God told me something was going on. And I, was, I felt like I was there. And it was a war. And intercession, sometimes it'll be groaning. Words won't even come out right. You, you'll be praying in the spirit. You don't even know what you're saying. But the word, you just feel a, 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 it's, a, it's a fight in prayer. It will usually drain you. And after I got done praying, I didn't know any idea what that meant. That was a Thursday morning. Friday, Saturday went by, went to Fort Lauderdale, preached on Sunday. Sunday night was preaching, and there was a big crowd, and I was telling them that even though if you don't know what you're praying for, just trust that God's using you. And I started telling the story, Bishop, about Thursday morning praying for a missionary. I had no idea that in the audience, the missionary from Poland's daughter was there. And as I'm telling this, she gets her dad on the phone to listen to the story. Afterwards, she asks, what time will you pray? She tells her dad. He calculates it. He said the exact same time that kid in Florida was praying. Your mom and I had packed our bags to leave Poland because we could not take the pressure anymore. But something came in the room and said, I'm not through with you yet here. Now, you may think it's cute, and I'm telling you, it's not cute. It's when you tap into the Spirit that God can pray things through you. I was preaching in Louisiana. Anyone ever been to Jonesville, Louisiana? Three people. Anyone know that Jonesville, Louisiana exists? Three people. Didn't even have a McDonald's. Or anything else it's in a swamp and uh we were preaching and i was preaching this message and the pastor son was about 19 he was a short little guy and he was it's funny me calling someone short he was a short guy and uh he he uh he was in the corner and bishop when he started praying i immediately knew something was going on because he was praying clearly in a Middle Eastern dialect. And he was Caucasian, didn't speak any foreign languages, and he's over there in the corner for almost an hour. And he keeps doing this. I can't do it with the microphone, but he keeps pointing at someone and commanding shackles to fall off the hands. And then he keeps pointing down at the feet and telling them, take the stuff off his feet. As his eyes are closed and he's speaking, in a Middle Eastern dialect, 45 minutes to an hour. I mean, people stopped for, they were just staring at him after a while. And he did not, he was, he was, just, he was, just, he was shaking, and he was shaking so hard. I told the Lord, I said, Lord, you got to get this through him. He's, his body can't handle it. He said, this must be a big deal. And so I went over to him, I said, in Jesus' name, he fell down praying. I got up, and the Lord spoke to me, and I told the people, and they stared me down. I said, you're going to hear about a hostage situation in the Middle East very soon and just know that this kid's prayer was what did it and they were like and the next week we were driving through Houston my wife was asleep kids were asleep turn the radio on the news comes on top of the hour and the newscaster said this last week America and Iran exchanged hostages we released seven Iranians. They had three Americans. They released two of them. But a third one was a pastor from Idaho. And they would not release him until an unknown ambassador walked in the room and kept telling them over and over, take the shackles off of his hands and take the shackles Shataya, off of his feet.
If you're not getting a yes, get off Netflix right now. Get off social media for a little bit and let me help you to see that prayer can truly change the world. It's in Stockton. In the revival a few years ago, a revival just like this. And we were a few weeks into it. And every service we were praying for Israel. They pray for Israel every service. And we were praying for Israel in the song service like we'd done every service. And, and so they're praying. And I start praying just like we're just, just, just kind of just getting through it, you know. And something hits me. Go and do it now, Josh. And so I begin to just war on the front row for Israel. And now you're going to think I'm crazy, but listen to the story. Some of you all thought I was crazy the last six weeks. Why are you still here then? And so I was interceding. And now I'm interceding. My eyes are closed, and I'm, and I'm, I'm gone. And as sure as I'm standing here, I see like a movie being played. Men walk up to the border, some border. And they launch these rockets into Israel. And as sure as I'm standing here, when they launch them, this being made out of fire up in the sky turned around and swatted the rockets back in across the border on the other side. And I got up. You know, not much wisdom at the time. It's probably still not much. And told them what I saw. And they all stared at me. But the next morning on the news, the next morning, the newscaster said, these men pulled up the border of Israel, launched rockets into Israel, and in midair, the rockets reversed and went back into Palestine. Oh, it's cute. Y'all aren't ready for this, are you? Y'all wants me to cheer you up still? And I told, I said, I bet you that was an angel of the Lord, a warring angel blocking that. Made out of fires, boom. And then four years later, Lee Stone King calls me, and we're talking one day about random stuff, and he said, boy, I want to tell you something that T.W. That T. Barnes told me. Randomly. I said, he was a prophet of God. So what he said, he said he would pray for Israel every day. I said, yeah. He said, one time he went to Israel, and he sat down on the bed, and Michael, the archangel, was in his room and said, welcome to, Tom, to Israel, Tom Barnes. We've waited for you, and flew back in the sky. And he said, you see, Michael dwells in the sky on the border of Israel. I said, wait a second. What does Michael look like? He said, you wouldn't believe it. He's made out of fire, and he blocks the border of Israel. I said, oh, I think I would believe it. Now, y'all are ready for this because I'm telling you tonight that when you get deep in the spirit, you can change things all over the world. And that's why I'm trying to have a hard time to connect with some of you because you haven't prayed five minutes this week. But if this revival is going to break out, you need to get a burden for this city that's stronger than a burden for a raise on your job. Oh, it's quiet. Stronger than, Lord, bless me. Lord, give me that car. Lord, give me that house. Lord, give me that purse. Come on. If you really want revival, you've got to get in the spirit because there's needs all over Dallas right now. We're driving through Kentucky before the kids were born. On our way from revival to revival. Janae is reading something on her phone and then just breaks out crying. Just extreme crying. And I literally had to pull the car off because I didn't. I was like, man, what happened? Who, who passed away? What, what happened? And uh, she couldn't even compose herself. And she just handed me the phone. So I just started reading. Lady works at Walmart, Pennsylvania. Two sons, five-year-old Scotty, three-year-old Charlie. Meets a co-worker, big guy, I forget his name, six foot four, 350 pounds. They start dating. He moves in. One morning, Charlie wakes up 
and doesn't want to eat his breakfast. And so the man begins to punch him over and over and over. I'll leave out as many details as I can. Takes him and throws him in the room, Bishop, and locks the door and leaves the three-year-old boy there all day. The next morning, they get ready to eat breakfast. They go unlock the door. And his face is all swelled up. And he can't even open his mouth to eat. And because he can't open his mouth to eat, the man does it again over and over and over. Throws him in the room and they leave for the day. And when they come back that night, Charlie was dead on the floor, had laid there for hours, dying. There's a lot of other details I'm leaving out. And when I read it, I will just be honest with you. Judge me if you want. I don't care. I got mad. And I said, why, God, would you let this happen? And immediately, God spoke to me and said, there was no intercessors. My people only care about their stuff, their families, their job, their money, their health, their blessings. I told that at Woodlawn one night in Mississippi. And I told that story, and I had no idea in the back was a lady and her daughter. They were from Pennsylvania, from the town that that lady was from. And that lady had started going to their church a couple weeks before with the kids. She was desperate for help. But people all over this city are hurting. Some of you have not come to outreach once, but if you do it, would come, you would just see it tomorrow morning. You would see black eyes. You would see stuff on the ground. You'd see the beer cans. You'd see the evidence of fights the night before. You'd see the evidence of kids being slapped around and abused. I wish you would sit there. I'm finding you. And I go to church, to church, to church, and I have to hold this message back because when I get there, it separates the real hunger from the fraudulent. It separates real revival from faking it until we, let's just get the building full. I am not here to see this building get filled and then just leave. We need something to break in every family and every person right now that teaches us how to really pray. Someone in this city is in trouble right now. Is there anyone that knows how to pray? There's a kid in this city being slapped around right now. I don't hear any mothers. There's a gang hit out. It's trying to creep in here. That spirit of intercession is trying to move in here right now. When will we get a burden and pray until God shows us what we're praying for? I don't need to know what it is. I just need to get into the position of availability. And as I'm praying, he'll take me to the prison cell. He'll take me to the apartment complex. He'll take me to the house. Car wreck going down the night somewhere near. Unless somebody prays. Someone's on a bridge. If you want real revival, welcome to the spirit world right now. 
it's time to pray for people like you've never prayed for people. I can tell you stories all night long. You don't need that. What, the Spirit of the Lord is in this room right now. This altar call won't be like every other altar call. I challenge this entire church. If you've never prayed like this, it's time to pray the most selfless prayer. Do you realize the eyes of your Savior are watching every crime going on right now, every abuse situation, every kidnapping, every terrible thing, that you can imagine the Lord's watching it and he's looking for someone to intercede so he can pray protection. God will do nothing but answer prayer. It's starting to creep in here. It needs to get in the back right about now. It needs to get on every pew. I have laid hands on every single chair in this revival, walking through praying, saying, God, when it's time to preach this message, would you release a spirit of intercessory prayer? People, there's a war on the floor right now. It is time to find your place and pray until God speaks a name to you, a city to you, a country. It may not even be something like that, but if you'll just keep praying, something will pop up. Do not stop praying until until God does something through you. There was no intercessor for little Charlie. Nobody prayed for him that day. Nobody called that family's name out to God. No one said, Lord, send angels to that house right now. No one prayed that. No one prayed that. Oh, God, don't let me sleep if I'm not praying for somebody else. How can I say I'm your child if I'm not sensitive to your voice? How can I say I walk with you and I don't pray for other people? Everyone in this building has suffered. I'm not making light of what you're going through. I hope you understand that. I'm just trying to tell you God needs you right now. Would you find a place and would you pray like you've never prayed?